What is going on guys? We are back playing some more surviving with rotary craft. Now today guys are going to be messing around with the woodcutter and the fertilizer. So we are going to be doing a little bit of farming, but the main reason behind this isn't just to get wood. Now the wood is going to be really nice because as you'll notice in a bit when we go upstairs to do some enchanting, uh, I have not finished the upstairs of the base and it's going to be majority of it is going to be wood. Uh, and that's mainly just because I've been too lazy to go and chop down wood. So that is one nice perk of having this that I will finally have the wood needed to finish the upstairs of the base, but we're also going to be making it because eventually I want to have a fully automated sludge producing fermenter setup because if you don't know this setup is made to make sludge which we then produce uh, the ethanol crystals with and I do use a lot of performance engines and gas engines which require a lot of ethanol crystals now I've been told for a really long time that I should make a fully automated fermenter setup which is going to involve a sugarcane farm some auto crafting to get the sugar and then it's going to require you know all the fermenter setup that we have in here and unfortunately that can only get us so far because it gets us to the yeast but then we need a plant like substance in this bottom slot here and if we look at uh, I guess we can look at some of the recipes when it comes to making sludge uh, you know you can use different things like saplings you can use uh, you know potatoes sugar more sugar cane which I guess we we could work with um, but we want the sugar cane going into the sugar so we're actually going to be making this farm to get sawdust and that is a byproduct of it we are going to get the wood and then you get sawdust on top of it and that's what we're going to pump into this one to get some more sludge and that's going to be really nice to have so it kind of does have multiple purposes in why we're making this so that is something we're going to work on in the future but that is one of the main reasons we're doing this today so there's a good amount that we need to craft and I do have you know a couple of miscellaneous things in here um, but this book right here actually reminds me that we should go up and do some enchanting upstairs because I'm level 31 I've been chilling doing a lot of enchanting sitting around the blaze spawner just actually completely forgot that I have a jetpack so that kind of scared me a little bit but we're gonna be doing a level 30 enchant here fortune 2 not the worst thing in the world I've gotten worse I really could go for another you know silk touch or something uh, or efficiency anything like that but you know, I haven't gotten really lucky in uh, in terms of enchanting, except for this book right here. So Infinity One, we can actually use this on the woodcutter. Now, of course, I could use this on a bow, but I don't really use bows. So the next best thing is a woodcutter because this is going to guarantee that it always replants a sapling, which is great because you're not always going to have that luxury. So we're going to do a little bit of crafting right here. Uh, I am going to grab as much of this stuff as I can. Hopefully, we will have enough room for it. The nice thing about this whole setup is that we don't actually need to maintain it in terms of adding ethanol crystals or anything. We're going to be using DC electric engines, pumps as usual, and a steam engine setup, and we should be good to go. So we do need to craft a two to one gear unit, which we're going to be doing a diamond version. So I do need to remember to go get a bucket of lubricant downstairs, and I actually do need some buckets for the water to go in the pump later, but I want to remember that before we leave. So hopefully I don't forget. Uh, luckily, we can also use stone shafts for moving this power a little bit, and I'll explain why. Uh, but luckily it's just going to be moving the power from a steam engine so it really isn't anything special so now we got to do the crafting for the woodcutter and it's surprisingly easy to craft uh it should be a relatively early game item it's going to take two saws two steel ingots three base panels and a 2x gear unit so nothing bad and i probably should have made this a while ago it would make a lot of you know crafting a lot easier especially early game but unfortunately you know hindsight's 2020. Uh, now we're going to be making the fertilizer. Now this is not crucial when it comes to actually setting up this farm. The reason I'm making this is because I want to show you guys how to use it. And also because I have a lot of bone meal. Because fortunately the grinder allows you to get 9 bone meal from each bone. So you go outside for one night, kill a couple skeletons, and you'll be set for a very, very long time. So this again is relatively cheap and it can work, you know, fertilizing anything from crops to saplings, all that good stuff. And we'll read a little bit about this in the book later, but... It's going to require a chest, two base panels, a shaft unit, two liquid pipes, and an impeller. Now the reason it's going to require liquid pipes is because, as we'll talk about later, it's going to dissolve this bone meal in water, which luckily we should be able to pump out using the same DC electric engine and pump, and that's going to allow it to actually spread it like a sprinkler, which is going to be great. So I think we should have everything on us that we're going to need right now, and we can head outside and set this up. So I do want to set it up a little bit away from the base just because obviously uh, we can't set everything up downstairs and we're going to be working with a little bit of fire. So if I do by any chance start a forest fire, I do not want it spreading to the base. 
and eventually, uh, I forgot to mention this when I went upstairs to do some enchanting, but eventually I'm going to have a really big portion of the base back there, and it's kind of hard to describe, but it's going to require a lot of wood to work with, so yeah, that's, that's really why I want a lot of the wood, and I need to finish uh, a roof on each side of these. I want to do two just pretty normal roofs. I guess they'd be like just a triangle. Like, I don't even know what you'd call that. There's definitely a technical term for it, but it'd be like a triangular roof on these. So I got to do all that and I don't have the wood to do it right now. So that's another reason we're doing this, like I said. So we're going to be setting up the wood cutter and I guess we can do it right here. And I'm just noticing this. If you're, you know, tuning into this video for the first time out of any of my series, it might not seem that weird to you, but if you've been watching this series for a while, you'll know that there's always some form of background noise. And if we just pause, I always like to pause and, and let us all drink it in when it's quiet in the background. So we can just take a split second, just enjoy the silence. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's always noise going on in the base and eventually there's going to be noise going on out here once we start the pumps and the steam engine and DC electric. But for now we can enjoy it. And I'm realizing right now that we're actually going to be missing one lever, unfortunately. So we might be able to get around that, but I don't think we will. So the reason that I want these stone shafts is because we're going to be bringing the power a little bit away from this because I have noticed through testing that you do actually light the tree on fire occasionally and it doesn't really cause that much of an issue but you do light some of the leaves on fire if you have the steam engine as close as possible to the wood cutter. So I don't really want that on the off chance that you know we plant some trees around here and it starts a fire and the sun is going down unfortunately so i'm going to go in and sleep in a second but i guess we can look at the uh, handbook real quick and go over what we're going to be working with today so it's under the farming tab and the first one is the wood cutter which will cut away at a trunk of a tree causing the rest of it to collapse it's a really cool animation the leaves collapse um or at least they they used to i i actually i'm forgetting they they might not anymore uh, i'm not sure it might just get rid of them but uh in videos i've seen before the tree uh the leaves actually fell to the ground which was pretty cool um but the tree will collapse and it will replant it if a sapling dropped. And here's the important part. If enchanted with infinity, it will always replant the tree. Now, if we go over, you can see it requires pretty much just the power that you're going to be getting from a steam engine. We are going to be using the 2 to 1 gearbox to double the torque. And yeah, input the power through the back. Relatively easy to use. And it will try to automatically output anything it gets into a chest that's below it. So just something to keep in mind. And now I'm actually gonna go in and sleep real quick before we start setting this up. And I am going to get another lever just because we are going to need that for the two sets of DC electric engines. So we should be able to get that right out of here. Extremely full chest. Uh, I guess I do have a little bit of wood left in here, but most of it is converted into oak wood planks. Unfortunately, I guess I was kind of stupid and did that on accident. Okay, so I'm sorry about that guys, I had a little bit of a knock at the door so I had to cut from the video, but we are back and now we are ready to start setting this up. So, we're going to be taking the stone shafts and we're just going to be moving them out the back here a couple of blocks just so that the fire is going to be far enough away. It's not going to catch this on fire or the tree that's going to spawn in front of this. And we can just throw the sapling down right in front of it. This is where it's going to go. Uh, it pretty much just works right in front of it, but at the speed we're going to have it running, we're going to have way more than we actually need in terms of wood. Eventually, I might need to come over here and shut it off, but uh, that's mainly going to be because we are going to be working with the fertilizer, which is going to speed up the process a lot. So I'm not always going to have that running. So just something to keep in mind Now we can throw the chest down right below this, and then we can throw down... Oh man, I forgot the bucket. I kept saying I'm not going to forget that, but I forgot it. Okay, so we're going to throw in the diamond gear here. We can get it all set up, and then I'll go and get the lubricant. So we got to do the typical setup when it comes to using the pump, which I haven't actually done in a while. Uh, now, oh my god, I forgot the steam engine too. Okay. Okay, so we're back yet again because I keep forgetting to get all the stuff that I need, and I feel like you guys don't really want to watch me running around trying to, you know, frantically gather this stuff. But I did go and I got the steam engine, and I also went and got buckets of lubricant, but you can see I have four here. And the reason behind that is because I had four buckets, they were stacked, I clicked on a reservoir, not realizing that it was going to fill up all four of them. So, we can get rid of one right here, and then we're going to have to go get some water later, which is a little unfortunate because I really didn't want all these buckets, and now I can't really, I can't get rid of this. Can you, you can't even place it down normally, you can't drink, you can't do anything with this. Man, that mechanic just screwed me. Oh my gosh. Okay, and there's no there's no bodies of water nearby. That's really unfortunate. Okay, well, we're, we'll work with what we've got. So we're going to throw the steam engine right there, and then we're going to get the netherrack set up below it. But always remember not to light it on fire right away, or else you will eventually have the steam engine blow up if you don't get the water in there quick enough to cool it off. So, got all that set up, and now we can do the 
liquid pipe into the back of this and the terrain around here is not really favorable for this but we're gonna swing it this way and the reasoning behind that is because I want to set the fertilizer up over here and I want the closest path from the water going into the steam engine to go into the fertilizer because we're also like I said gonna need it for that too so we can throw down the pump over here which can go we can put it right there just so that we have a room to branch this off like that and then we can dig out this area below it and hook up the shaft junction and we should be relatively good to go with this except I'm gonna have to go get some water so flip it around that side get the two DC electric engines hooked up and there we go okay and throw the lever on there okay so fill that in with water and then what we're gonna be doing is taking this and we're gonna be putting the fertilizer right next to uh, we can put it, I guess we can put it right next to the oak sapling. For some reason last time, it doesn't really matter. So I guess we can actually put it here just because why not? Uh, I think it looks a little bit nicer. If we look at the fertilizer now under the farming tab, it's a little bit further over. It, when given appetite or bone meal, so it could be a good use of appetite if you're playing with a mod pack. It can accelerate the growth of nearby crops, saplings, and other plants. And it says to dissolve the fertilizer, this machine requires liquid water. Now, that's interesting because I don't know why it has to specify liquid, but it does. So we're going to be pumping in liquid water into this to dissolve the bone meal. And it uses up bone meal at a surprisingly slow rate. It's pretty awesome. Now, it has power input at the bottom. The required power is relatively low, and the range is based off the torque. But because we're only going to be looking to have it cover one, one single block, it is perfectly fine to have a very low torque for this. So we're just going to be using a single DC electric engine. And I am going to be using a bevel gear because the power input does need to go through the bottom. So that kind of is the most expensive portion of this setup. But we're going to be putting it right here. And it can go bevel gear, which is going to have to go from the south and then up. And then we're going to put the DC electric engine down. And of course, it doesn't want to face the correct way. So there we go. And we can just throw down the lever right over here. And that should be good to go. So it does have a really cool animation. And eventually, when it gets water in it, we'll be good to go. But I can throw the bow meal in it for right now. It's got a relatively big internal storage, which is great if you decide either you have a skeleton farm or you want to go out and do some... Uh, gathering, you know, just go out with either a fortune sword or something, or I mean a looting sword and just kill a bunch of skeletons one night. Uh, you can just stockpile this thing, just throw as much bone meal in it as possible, and a full thing would last you a ton of time. And I'll let you guys see in a little bit how fast this uses it. So now we got to take a little trip to get some water for this. So I do have to run over here. Unfortunately, I think I'm actually going to have to make two trips, which is really actually kind of depressing. Uh, so... Yeah, uh, those shouldn't be using them. Okay, so, yeah, there's no way for me to really get rid of this lubricant other than running into the base right now. But, yeah, so, just, uh, how's life, guys? How's it been? How's it going? You know? How are things? I, you know, I had a fun day at work today. That's actually a lie. I didn't really have a fun day. Uh, if you guys are curious, working as a sales associate, not really a glamorous job. I know a lot of you probably thought it was. It's not. People, customers can be really mean, you know? Uh, they can be kind of rude. So, yeah, I don't know. Not all it's cracked up to be. Okay, so, now that we had our little chit-chat, our little water cooler talk for the day, we should be good to go over here. So, we're going to flick this thing on, and... It should pump at a good enough rate once we kind of let these fill up a little bit. Uh, okay, so you can see it's already running there. The tree has grown. You get some cool particle effects coming from the um, from the fertilizer over here. Oh, get out of the water. Yeah, so... Ooh, did that even dissolve one? I don't even... Did it even use one yet? Interesting. Like, okay. It's not, it's not special bone meal. I feel like it should have used that so far, but I guess it didn't. Okay, now I'm kind of mad because like I don't really like how this looks right here. Just a random patch of that, but it dissolves it very slowly, and it's good to go just with the power from a DC electric engine. And over here, everything should be good to go once we set this on fire. You don't really hear that very often, but one thing I want to make sure we do is throw the infinity on this wood cutter because we want to make sure that we get the saplings back. For some reason, I don't have a very big stockpile of saplings. It's because I'm pretty sure it's because I've been throwing them into the um, fermenter, so I, you know, I really didn't have any. I actually had to go out of my way to get one for this today, but 
we're gonna throw that on there makes it look pretty cool it is a little bit glitchy if you look at whaler right now you can see it's kind of got like the wood cutter and then it shows that it's got an enchant on it it's great it tells you it's got infinity but then if you look at like the purple glowing portion it looks like it shifted back a little bit from it i noticed that a little bit ago and i thought it was kind of weird but we can take a s whoa whoa inventory tweaks you're freaking me out here okay Take a manly snack of pork chops and light this puppy on fire, and we should be good to go once this starts spinning. Now, keep in mind, this is not going to be going at a very high speed. That is just because, I, you know, it's really not that important that it goes at a high speed, uh, mainly because you're going to notice that even if you don't use um, the bone meal, even if you're not using the fertilizer, you're going to get way more than you actually need, especially if you just leave this thing running, which you honestly should be able to considering none of this except the fertilizer is going to require any maintenance aside from the woodcutter if you don't have an infinity enchant, but that really should not be that much of a problem. I got a little lucky, well, lucky with air quotes. I did a ton of enchanting, and I just decided we were going to work on this today because I got the infinity enchant. I was really looking for enchants that I could throw on the boring machine or at least, you know, on a, on a sword or something. But um, I did get the infinity enchant. So if you don't have that, it does require a little bit more maintenance or a little bit more luck, I guess you could say. But, um, yeah, so I got a little bit lucky. We'll let this thing fire up, and then we'll get to see the speed at which it chops this down. We'll get to see how everything works, and you'll get to see the outputs. So... You can see, let's take a look over here and just look at the fertilizer. So, yeah, it hasn't used another one yet. That's interesting because when I was testing this out, it did consume one bone meal right away. Um, but this one didn't seem to do that. Okay, so it's chopping it down. You can see this is the relative speed at which it goes. So it does chop the leaves first, keeps going and going and going all the way around. Um, so I guess the video that I had seen of it was an older video uh, where they actually chopped down the trunk and then the leaves fell down with it but chops down the tree and then it should regrow relatively quick. It plants the sapling. Ooh, and we got a big one this time. Okay, so that's gonna take a little bit longer to actually chop down, but the output is gonna be some oak wood and then some sawdust. And sawdust can be used for a couple different things. It's actually pretty cool. So if we look at the uses for this, you can use it to make paper. You can use it to make all the different planks, which is awesome if you don't always have access. Sure, this might be a little bit pricey, spruce and then ink sacks, but you know, you could always farm some squid up. I don't know. Um, you know, you could always waste cocoa beans on that. That's great. But you could also use it to just make a single oak wood plank. So this is pretty much if you have nothing else to do with it, you need to condense it a little bit. You can also use it like this with uh, quick lime to make some paper. But this is what we're looking for. You can use it with the yeast in a fermenter to make sludge, which is awesome. Now there is a downside. You can't actually get better effectiveness when it comes to yeast. If you're using uh, actual leaves that you got with a shear, that should, I believe, go one leaf to two sludge whereas we're going one to one here but once we eventually automate it i don't think we're going to be worried that much about effectiveness so that'll be a great use for the sawdust and this one is just taking an absolute ton of time to actually run down because of how large it is but i think we're going to call it there for today guys i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please feel free to give it a like also if you found it informative please feel free to give it a like too as it does help me out a ton and i will talk to you guys later